Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to be showing you some great techniques for using the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator 2021. Now the pen tool is arguably the most powerful tool in Adobe Illustrator, yet so many designers, especially those new to Illustrator, struggle with it and tend not to use it that much. So in this video, we're focusing on some really easy techniques to get the most out of the pen tool so you can start using it in a much better and more intuitive way. You can also download a free template file from the description below that you can use to follow along with this tutorial. If you enjoy this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more weekly design content. Okay guys, let's head on to the computer now and get started. Okay, so here we are in Illustrator and we have our template file open that you can download from the description below. As you can see, we already have some reference images set up within this file. And that's my first tip, is to always try and use some kind of reference image when you're using the pen tool. It really makes life so much easier. Even if this is just a rough sketch, it's much easier to get things like proportions and flowing lines correct when we're just doing this handheld with a pencil on a bit of paper for example and we can always then take that into Illustrator, trace it with the pen tool and tidy it up and make it look professional on the computer. So you don't have to be good at sketching, I'm certainly not, but I still always utilise this technique. Now over in our layers panel you'll see we have a few different layers to work with. We are going to be designing on this trace slash design layer. I'm just going to turn off our images layer. We also have some pre-traced examples here so you can always refer to these and take a look at things like where the anchor points are placed on these examples as well if you need to but I'm just going to turn this off for the time being and we're just going to focus on trying to do our own traces in this video. So before we start jumping into the techniques themselves we're going to go over the very basics of the pen tool. If there's anyone who's completely new to Illustrator or the pen tool this is important to know. So with it selected from the left hand side the keyboard shortcut is P which is always good to remember. We can simply plot anchor points and create paths with this tool. So if I click once, we have plotted a single anchor point. You can see I have this preview line, which is going to tell me where the path is going to go. If I click again, that's creating another anchor point, and I can basically just keep going with this. I could create a shape this way if I wanted to go back to the first anchor point. That's created a closed shape. I'm just going to hit delete a few times. What I can also do is click and drag, and you'll see we get these Bezier handles appearing. So this is for creating a curve path. If I let go now you can see we have our preview line and this is creating a curved path here. I could click and drag again to continue this and depending on how far we drag this out the more severe the curve will be. Same goes for the angle that we drag it out at. You can see this is just going to change how the path flows depending on where I drag this to. So we'll go over this in more depth with the techniques we'll be looking at but this is basically how the pen tool works. So another tip when using the pen tool is that we always want to try and create as few anchor points as possible when creating our designs. This is generally going to make them much easier to edit for a start and more often than not will result in much smoother lines when we're using the pen tool. So let's take a look at an example and this is something that I would urge you to do as well. Look at examples of work from other designers and how they use the pen tool or more specifically how they plot anchor points. So what I'm going to do is just grab my type tool and I'll just click once that's going to create some dummy text here. Now we have the typeface metropolis selected here and I'm just going to change this to be the regular version and what I could do is just outline this text. So to do that I can right click and then click create outlines. Now if I zoom in on this we can actually see where the anchor points have been plotted when this font was being designed. So you can see these letters are really clear Clean, very precise and there's really few anchor points being used to make these up. So this is a great example of how we should be using the pen tool when creating designs. Another thing you'll note on this design is that if I actually click on one of these anchor points, all of these Bezier handles are at 90 degree angles. So that's actually the first technique we're going to be looking at. It's the 90 degree technique and this takes a lot of the guesswork out of how we use the pen tool. So I'm just going to delete this text for now. We'll come back to it 
bit later on. So we have some simple script text here that we are going to trace. On this first one, we're going to use this 90 degree rule or 90 degree technique. So let's grab the pen tool again. And what we want to do first is think about where we're plotting our anchor points. So a good rule of thumb with this is to place them at the extremes of our graphic. So in this case, we want to plot an anchor point on the leftmost edge of this curve. So I'm going to plot it down here somewhere. We would then want to go to the topmost point, so up here. Now obviously this is a very simple example because this is just basically an ellipse, but this gives you an idea of how we would plot our anchor points. So going to the right hand side now and then the bottom of the ellipse and those would basically be where we plot our anchor points. Now obviously I've not applied any Bezier curves so this is just creating a box here which isn't what we want. So I'm just going to delete this. What I'm also going to do is flip my fill to a stroke. So this is another useful tip. When we're creating our paths, always just use a stroke and no fill as it's much easier to see where we're plotting our points and the filled areas aren't going to get in the way. We can always flip it back to be a filled colour afterwards, but in the initial stages it's always easier to just use a stroke. I'm going to keep the stroke just at one point as well so this is nice and thin and this just means I can be a little bit more precise with what I'm doing and make sure that my path is as smooth as possible. So sometimes if we use a thicker stroke weight it can kind of hide areas that maybe need to be cleaned up a little bit. So keeping it at a small size is definitely going to work well. I'm going to zoom right in here. So we'll start over on the left hand side again. Let's roughly find that leftmost point and this time I'm actually going to click and drag. So we've got our Bezier handle here. If I hold shift that's actually going to lock the angle at which we drag this out. It's actually locking to 45 degree angles. You can see if I drag my mouse around it's going to snap to those. Now we want to drag it in the direction that we're creating the path. So I'm dragging up the way so we're going to go around this character in a clockwise fashion. So I'm just going to roughly drag it out. It's not going to be perfect straight away but we now have a curving preview line. Now something that I already have set up that can be very useful as well is the size of our anchor point and Bezier curve handles. So we can actually change this by going up to Illustrator, Preferences, Selection and Anchor Display and you'll see down here we actually have a size slider. So I've got this set to max so that it's really obvious where those handles are. If I take this right down and click OK we can actually make this much smaller but this is much harder to see. So I'm going to go back up and put this back to the maximum size so it's very obvious. Click OK. Another thing we can do is change the colour of these handles and the preview line so it stands out a bit more. In this case it's a little bit difficult to see. So to do that we would have to go over to our layer that we're working on. If I double click on the layer I can click on this colour tile here and we can select a new colour. So I think I'll just go with something darker. I'll go with a darker blue for example and hopefully this will just stand out a little bit more. So let's click on the cross now. That's changed. If I click OK this is now updating and that's much clearer. So let's continue on now with our path here. I'm going to hold spacebar and pan up to the top and we're going to create our top anchor point clicking, holding shift and dragging off to the right. So we're still locking that to be at a 90 degree angle. And with our preview line we can basically fine tune how much we drag these Bezier handles out so that it matches what we're trying to create. So I'm going to go with that for the top one. What I can do is go and alter our previous handles on the fly before creating our next point. So again holding spacebar I can just pan back down and if I hold command or that will be control on a PC we actually switch to our direct selection tool so I can do a few things with this. I could select the previous anchor point or any other anchor point for that matter. I could click and drag this around if I wanted to reposition it. I can also click and drag on this handle and we can adjust the curve that way as well remembering to keep holding shift as well so that it's locking to that 90 degree plane and I can easily make adjustments that way. So we can just do this on the fly as we go. Let's go and plot our right hand point. So I'm going to go here somewhere again, remembering that we want to click and drag in the direction we're going. So I'm going to click down this time, holding shift. And you can see the curve up here is basically overshooting where we want it to go. So this is another case where I'd want to hold command. We're going to switch to the direct selection tool and we'll drag that curve handle back in. 
holding shift and we can just nicely match that up. So it just takes a little bit of trial and error going back and forth until it's looking right. This is just part of the process. But as you can see, this has been pretty easy to do. So let's just put our last anchor point in, holding shift once more. We'll drag this out and I'm going to have to go back up, hold command and drag on the previous handle. And by doing that, you can see it's making the curve of this path slightly overshoot down at the bottom. So this is where there's just a little bit of trial and error involved to get this flowing correctly. But I think that's pretty good now. And now we can go and join it back up to the original anchor point. Now note that I still need to click and drag here to create a curve handle on the bottom of this anchor point. It's not affecting the handle that we've already created, but I still need to drag this out so that we still have some curvature on that side of the anchor point. Let's go back and adjust this curve, holding shift the whole time to make sure that these are all at 90 degree angles. And that's it for our first path. So that's only taken four anchor points. This is super clean and this has been pretty easy to trace. Now, obviously, like I say, this is a fairly simple shape to work with. So this is obviously easier than something more complex like this K over here. What we'll do is we'll just very quickly create this inner circle. So I'll start at the bottom this time. I'm going to click and drag to the left. So we're still going clockwise. And what you can do is just click and drag a bit and not really worry too much about the curves initially. We're just really wanting to place our handles and then we can go back and fine tune them. So this, this can work for some people doing it this way. So now I'm just holding command and shift and I'm just going to go back round and adjust all of these lines. So we'll leave it at that. Again, that was very easy to do. And that's another point is that we can just go back with our direct selection tool selected and fine tune these more. We don't always have to do it via the pen tool, if that makes sense. So moving on to this letter K, this is an example where we can't only use the 90 degree rule. So that is one of the drawbacks of it. It doesn't work for every scenario as we're about to show you. Now to show you this more clearly, let's grab my type tool again. I'm just going to click once more and and this time I'm going to change this to an italicized font instead. Let's convert this to outlines again. The keyboard shortcut for that, by the way, is Shift Command O, or that's Shift Control O on a PC. Now, if I grab my direct selection tool, if I select some of these points where the curvature of the path is moving more horizontally, you can see we're still dealing with 90 degree handles here. However, when we get down to the more vertical lines, this is where we can't use that technique. So on these bottom points, for example, we technically have a really long bezier handle here which is creating a straight line but this is off at a different angle so this is where the 90 degree rule just can't work so we have to work with the angles that we're dealing with so let's just go ahead and delete this text again let's move over to the letter k now so again the keyboard shortcut is p on the keyboard and i now have my pen tool selected so let's again think about where we're plotting the anchor points so the same rule applies i'm going to look for the extremes in the letter. So let's start with this left edge. Now the way this letter is curving down here, I could still use our 90 degree rule here. I can click up and hold shift and that's probably going to work well in that area. Now it's the next part of this path that's going to be the issue. If I were to go up to the top here, I could click and drag at a 90 degree angle again. Let's flip this to be a stroke. If you do this and you've got a fill set instead of a stroke, simply press shift X on your keyboard and that's going to flip the fill to a stroke. That's a much easier technique than going and doing it manually. So holding command, I'm going to click and drag down, holding shift as well. And and you can see I can match certain parts of this line, but not the whole thing. So this is where potentially another anchor point is going to be needed. So I'm going to press Command Z a couple of times until we're back to just having our first anchor point. And I'm just going to plot one in the middle of this line here. And all I'm doing here is trying to match the angle that this is going at as best I can. So this isn't an exact science. It's not quite as precise as just using 90 degree angles. But like I say, there are instances where we just have to do this. So going up to the top of the letter K now, it's not a 90 degree angle here either. So again, I'm just going to try and match the flow of this, the flow of this line. Let's hold command and I'm just going to drag this handle up more to match the curvature of this character. So this is still working pretty well and we're still using minimal anchor points, which is important. Now getting to the top here, we can go back to using the 90 degree rule. So clicking and dragging, holding shift, I can easily match this 
this curve. We're going over to the rightmost part of this next section of the character. So again, clicking, dragging down, holding shift, and we can continue this right down to the bottom here. So in this case, I've got a sharp corner, so I can simply just click once. And if I zoom out, we can go back up to our previous anchor point, hold command, click and drag this down while holding shift. And that was an easy one to match up. We now have a straight path extruding from our last anchor point. So again, we're going to find the next extreme of this next segment. So you kind of want to split up your paths into segments. So in this case, we've got this swooping curve and then a round corner here. So this would be one segment. So I'm just going to plot my next anchor point where this curve is furthest over to the right hand side. Again, clicking and dragging up the way because that's the direction our path is going. Let's let go, hold command, and I'm going to drag this down until we get that matching up nicely. Very easy. Now we're going over to the left most portion of this next area. So clicking and dragging up like so, maybe just slightly adjust this curve handle as well. And really from here, this is fairly straightforward. Just using the 90 degree rule, this is going to work for most of the rest of this character, I think. So let's click down the way now. Nice and easy, we've got another sharp point here. So I'm just gonna click once at that point. We'll go back and adjust the Bezier curve, like so. Here we have a curve going down the way. So I'm looking for the bottom most point of this curve. Go with about that, click and drag to the right. Now here's a case where I can't quite get the flow of this part of the character correct. So what I can do is go back to my previous anchor point and this is where we're going to bring in technically another tool which is the anchor point tool. So again we can use this on the fly without having to actually change the tool we have selected by pressing option on a Mac or alt on a PC. So you can see my cursor changes. Now this is actually similar to the next pen tool technique we're going to be looking at which we'll go into more detail later in this video but for now all I need to do is click and drag on this path so if I do that with option held down it's going to create a bezier handle only on that side of the anchor point and I can just let go I can press command now we can go back to our direct selection tool and we can fine-tune this a little bit more so let's drag down a touch we'll go back over and make sure this is the same we've still been able to use the 90 degree rule with this curve so I'm gonna to go to the top of this curve next click and drag to the right and and this is a case where we might need to just play around with how many anchor points we have here. So I'm just gonna go back and adjust this curve first. Let's drag this one out a bit. And I could place one on the right hand side here. What I'm going to try and do though, is just place one down at the bottom and see how we get on. So let's click and drag. This may not work, but it's always worth trying this to keep the number of anchor points at a minimum. And drag this out some more. And actually that's working quite well. So if I placed an anchor point on the right hand side, that may have been too much and created a less flowing path here. So that's a good example of that. We didn't need to place one there. Let's go back up to this sharp corner here. Click once, go back and adjust that curve. That's looking good. We'll go down to the bottom now. This is another one where we may need to play around with the anchor points we're using. As you can see, I can match curvature at the bottom of this character, but not through the middle section here. So again, I'm gonna hold Option, Alt on a PC, and just click and drag on this path. That's gonna pull out a Bezier handle from that previous anchor anchor point. Let's go back to our direct selection tool by holding command. We'll just adjust this. And again, I'm just trying to match the angle of the path that we want to create here. Let's go back down to the bottom and adjust this some more. Let's hold shift. Let's see if we can maintain the 90 degree rule down at the bottom here. Yep, I think that's going to work. And we can join up with our first anchor point. So again, clicking and dragging to make sure that we have curvature on both sides of this anchor point. Go something like that. And then we'll go back and adjust our path accordingly. So let's click off this now and I think we've done a pretty good job there. Now what's always a good idea as well is just to turn off your reference image if you're using one as sometimes you'll notice small areas that maybe need a little bit more attention. Think down at the bottom of this O for example. This just looks a little bit too sharp for my liking. So sometimes as we'll see later on in this video you don't want to get too focused on tracing your reference images too perfectly as sometimes they're not perfect them 
themselves. You want to do what looks best on screen at the end of it all. So that's why you quite often have to go back and just adjust some of your curve handles, for example, or the positioning of anchor points. So that's just what I'm doing here. Let's just slightly move this one over and see if we can get a slightly nicer flow to this. So I'll just go with that. It's not absolutely perfect, but you're getting a good idea of how this rule works. Let's turn our images layer back on. We're going to go down to the next example and we're going to look at another technique now. And this is one that I actually prefer to use more often than not because it's really so simple to do. So the same rules apply in terms of where we position our anchor points. We're still wanting to try and create as few as possible. And I would argue that this technique allows us to use even fewer anchor points than the 90 degree technique. So again, I'm looking for that left edge. I'm not even worrying about the bezier handle. So I'm just going to click once. Let's click up at the top here. And as we touched upon in the last example, we're going to be using the anchor point tool. So with these two points created, I can hold option or alt on a PC and simply click and drag. And this just feels a little bit more intuitive. We're really just placing the path where we want it. Again, it does take a little bit of trial and error to get this position perfectly. It really helps if you zoom in quite a lot as well. It also depends on where you're clicking on the path, how it's going to interact. So if I'm clicking down towards the first anchor point here, it's going to adjust that section of the path much more than the top. So just clicking and dragging in these areas until we get it matching up with our image. But that was so easy to do. Now we can do this on the fly as we've just done, or what I prefer to do is to actually just go and plot all of my anchor points first. So I'm going over to the right hand side now, down to the bottom, and then back to our original anchor point, like so. And then what I can do is actually switch to the anchor point tool itself. So I know this is a video technically about the pen tool, but these really go hand in hand. The keyboard shortcut for this is Shift C. So that's another useful one to remember as it's going to save you a lot of time just switching between these tools quickly. So I can go to our next path segment here. Let's click and drag this up and that's already almost working. Now in this example, we have the curvature of the path flowing quite well at the top, but not quite so much at the bottom. So what I like to do is slightly overshoot that top area. And then if I'm to go down to the bottom of the path, let's zoom in a touch. If I adjust this now, it's going to basically pull that top section back down so that it matches a bit more closely. Now you can see here, I've actually not positioned this anchor point particularly well. I could press A on my keyboard to go back to my direct selection tool and just reposition this and then shift C to go back to my anchor point tool. Now another thing, and this is the drawback of this technique, is that when we were using the 90 degree rule, we were ensuring that our bezier handles were extruding at the same angle either side of every anchor point. With this technique, we're not actually doing that. So we basically have to slightly eyeball it in terms of making sure that the angle they're extruding at is as close as possible. So for example, if, the, if I'd pulled this one down too much, it's going to create a sharper point where that anchor point is because of the difference in the angle that these curve handles are extruding. So it does take a little bit of practice to do this and really you've just got to trust your eye a lot of the time. What we can do though is just switch over to our direct selection tool. If I click on that anchor point, you can see them both at the same time and you can make little micro adjustments with this. It's sometimes a bit easier to do that, but the anchor point tool I find much easier for just getting the general flow of the curve in place first. So that's what I would recommend doing. We can click and drag on this very intuitively and then we can go and fine tune it with the direct selection tool afterwards. If I click and drag towards an anchor point, the handle extruding from that anchor point is obviously going to get smaller as well. That's another thing to note. It's really just one of those things that you will get used to using the more you use it. Just checking the angles on this anchor point. They're looking pretty good. Let's go down to this last segment, drag that into place now. And I think that's pretty solid. I can go back to my direct selection tool, just check some of these angles. So that one's not that great. Let's just slightly adjust that we Can go back to our original one. That's pretty good. I think it's good enough for this example. And if I zoom out, that is what we get. So very easy to use, only minimal anchor points here. I think for people who struggle with the pen tool, this is a great technique to use because it just feels a lot more intuitive. Now let's grab the pen tool again. And here's an example where we could actually try only using two anchor points. Let's give it a go. So I'm going to click once down at the bottom of this counter and then up at the top. And what I need to do first here is actually slightly manipulate this path. So I'm going to hold option again and let's just roughly drag this out. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. And then we'll go back down to the first anchor point and click again to close this. And now I'm just going to press shift C to switch to my anchor point tool. And from here, I'm just going to click 
and drag and try and manipulate these paths so that it fits. So this one's going to be a little bit trickier to do. If we've got a more extreme curve here, I would recommend going down to the anchor points themselves, quite close to them and dragging on them to create that curve initially. And then it's a little bit easier to fine tune from there. So you can see we've already done a pretty good job with this right hand side. Now I'll go over to the left hand side. Let's click and drag. We'll do the same thing. I'm not worrying too much about the angles of those curve handles right now. I'll go back and adjust them afterwards. I'm just trying to get roughly the shape and flow of this path first. So let's switch to my direct selection tool. We'll click on there. So you can see this one is a bit off, but it's much easier to go and adjust now. So we've got the general shape in place. This anchor point maybe just needs moved slightly like so, but, and we can just switch between these tools basically until we get something we're happy with. So I could keep fine tuning this, but I think that's good enough for this example. And you can see how easy that was to do with only two anchor points. And we'll hopefully highlight this even more in this next example. So we've got our letter K again. So let's press P on the keyboard and I'm just going to roughly plot my anchor points first. So starting with that left edge, I'm going to try just going right up to the top here. What you want to make sure is that you're not leaving too many spaces between anchor points where there's a change in the direction of the path. So from here, we've got one change in direction right at the very start, and then it's sort of swooping back round. So I'm plotting another anchor point before it then starts changing direction again. I can go over to the right hand side to drag out another path there. We can go down to this corner point. So the more you use this tool, the more you'll get used to where you should plot anchor points in terms of how easy it's going to be to create those curves with the anchor point tool. So I'm doing this relatively quickly and roughly here, but these anchor point placements should work pretty well. Create another one here, back up to the sharp point there. We'll click down towards the bottom of the K and then we'll close that up. So as you can see, not very many anchor points really needed for this. This looks very rough and rudimentary to begin with. Let's switch to our anchor point tool, shift C and start dragging out some curved areas. So we'll start down at the bottom here and I'm just going to do this very quickly just to show you hopefully how easy this is to do. So again, because we've got quite extreme angles with this curve, I'm just going quite close to the anchor points to get them set up first. Now these larger curves that we have here can sometimes be a little bit trickier to get right. So it's just a case of trial and error, clicking and dragging on certain areas until you get it to match up. But more often than not, it does work out if you just persevere. So I'm just clicking and dragging over and over. Zoom in and out as well is always a good idea to see where areas are maybe not quite aligning or flowing that well. You can see this isn't quite lining up. So it's just a case of fine tuning this as much as we can. So I'm just going to go with this for now. Let's keep moving on. Okay, so that's me gone around the whole thing initially. Again, I could switch to my direct selection tool and just go through each anchor point and just try and make sure that the angles are matching as closely as they can. Okay, so that is it for our two techniques. Now, like I said at the start, we have a bunch of examples set up here. Now, we don't have time to go and recreate all of these, but if I turn on my examples layer, we can actually see what we've created. So I'm gonna turn off the images layer for now. And in this example, we've just created single paths here to create this lettering. So if you haven't already, check out our converting images to vectors video, where we look at another example where we do this. If I press command, Y or Control Y on a PC, you'll see that these are just single paths. And the beauty of this is that we have more control over the weight of those paths. You can see here we've applied a paint style brush to this stroke as well to give it a little bit more character. And if I turn my images layer back on, I've actually adjusted this. I've adjusted things like the spacing and some of the flows of the line so that this looks better on screen. So like I say, with reference images, it's not always good to trace them exactly because they're not always going to be perfect themselves. Got another example here. If I turn on my example layer, we've gone slightly off. And because this is a neon sign, if I turn off the example layer, certain strokes aren't actually connected. So we've gone and used it for reference. We've traced the letters in general, and then we've gone and made some slight adjustments so that certain letters are joining up, for example, and that all of the angles are matching. That's another important thing to think about. What I could do is just select the whole thing. I'll go back to 
my outline view so you can see these are just single strokes as well and really not many anchor points were needed to create this so these were all created using the exact same techniques that we've just been over so this was actually a mixture of the 90 degree rule and our anchor point tool technique as well so if I press A on the keyboard and click on some of these you can see a lot of these are at 90 degree angles and really this wasn't very difficult to recreate so you should definitely give it a go yourself let's turn on the images layer once more and we'll just look at another example instead of focusing on text we've got some images of some birds here you can see the examples that have been created very simple but again utilizing these pen tool techniques these were very easy to create and this can be an excellent approach for something like a logo for example so let's turn off that example layer again turn on our images layer we'll go back to our trace and design layer and let's do a very quick trace of this bird here so I'm going to grab my pen tool reduce our stroke back down to one point again we've got a blue stroke this time that's fine for this example we'll zoom right in again and we'll use a mixture of techniques here so I'm going to start with the point of this beak this is quite straight really so I'm just going to make another anchor point here let's go to the top of the head we'll use our 90 degree rule initially drag out to the right We'll go over to the left of the neck here, click and drag down, go with that, and then we can just adjust this curve handle here. Something like that is fine. Go over to where the neck swoops back, click and drag once more, and we'll create another sharp point here where it connects to the body. I think that's going to be fine. Drag that down a touch. Now I'll keep going with the 90 degree rule for the time being and then when we start going back up the other side we'll switch techniques to see how we get on. So I'm actually going to bring this right down to the bottom of the tail here and this will require me to really drag this point out and actually I need an anchor point on the other side as well so I'll just do that. We don't have to match the image absolutely perfectly, especially if it's for something like a logo. You maybe want this to be slightly more geometric looking. It really depends on the style of the design you're going for. Now from here, I'm just going to basically click and plot some points. I'm going to be quite rough and I'm actually going to do the legs separately as well. So just clicking a few times, we'll use our anchor point tool to tidy this up. And I'll just go back to the start now. So again, shift C, let's just start at the top of the beak here. And again, I'm just being relatively rough with this to begin with. I can always go and fine tune it afterwards. That's an important thing to remember. It doesn't have to be perfect straight away. And the beauty of using fewer anchor points is that it's much easier to go and edit and fine tune. So down to the body here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfectly following the silhouette of this bird. This is really quite a rough example. And I actually want slightly sharp corners here. So I'm just going to leave it like so. What I could do is just turn off the images layer and that's going to reveal the actual path we've created a little bit more clearly and I find it's a little bit easier to then go and fine-tune this we're not as swayed by the image that we're tracing so this will do for this example so let's turn our images layer back on and we'll quickly trace the legs so again P to enable the pen tool and I'm just going to opt for the anchor point tool technique here so I'm just plotting a few points where I can see that there's going to be a change in direction with the curves but still being pretty rough with this does not have to be perfect at all close off that shape and we'll do the same for the other leg so we have our two very roughly plotted shapes here. Let's press Shift C to grab our anchor point tool and we'll just start adding some curvature to this. Sometimes even with a one point stroke here, if I'm dealing with quite a small image. So sometimes it's better just to move your path away so you can see roughly how it needs to curve in this example. So again just trying to match up those bezier handle angles as best I can I'm doing this quite roughly here not following the image that closely it's not that important in this example we're wanting to create something a little bit cleaner anyway so we'll go with that let's turn off our images layer again and what I could do is just drag over all this and press shift x again and if you remember that's going to flip our stroke to a fill and there you have a silhouette of this bird so very easy to use these techniques 
techniques. You can see these lines are pretty clear for the most part. With more time I may tidy up the neck area and get the lines flowing a little bit more smoothly but in general this is pretty good. If I go to my outline view let's select this and you can see very few anchor points needed to create this as well. So this is definitely what you want to strive for when you're using the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator and with these techniques it's very easy to do. So let's turn our images layer back on. Like I say we have another image here for you to have a go at and trace. We've got our example as well if you want to take a look at that and how we've plotted our anchor points. But that really rounds up our favourite techniques for using the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator and hopefully these techniques work well for you as well. If you have any questions at all please let us know in the comments down below and we'll do our best to help. If you'd like us to take a look at some other examples like creating a more detailed vector design from a photograph for example let us know in the comments as well and we'll be sure to create a video on that in the future. Okay guys that's it for this video I'll see you in the next one. If you want to learn more about graphic design we've put together a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers which saves you the hassle of trying to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs, how to pick the right colours for your designs and how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you're serious about levelling up as a graphic designer then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for and ours is free. The link's in the description, you're not going to want to miss it, I'll see you there.